Welcome to the class. We will see some more examples on axial compressor. The example reads that the first stage of an axial compressor is designed using free vortex theory. The speed of compressor is 60,000 rpm and stagnation temperature rise is 20 kelvin. Hub to tip ratio is 0.6 and work done factor is 0.93. Stage has isentropic efficiency of 0.89. Assume inlet to be axial with velocity of 140 meter per second, pressure 1.01 bar and temperature 288 Kelvin. If Mach number relative to the tip is 0 0.95, find the blade angles, mass flow rate, stagnation pressure ratio, power input and rotor angle at the root. Assume Cp to be 1.005 and gamma to be 1.4. In this case, we are told that inlet is having axial velocity. So, we can draw the velocity triangle spe special for this inlet is we are having C A 1 is equal to C 1 and this is V 1 and this is U. So, this is beta for this case we are having alpha 1 equal to 0. So, such that it is totally axial velocity. Then we will say what are the given things in this example. In this example n is said to be 60,000 rpm. Then delta T naught stage is equal to 20 Kelvin. Hub to tip ratio we can take it for the radius of hub and radius of tip as 0.6, work done factor as 0.93, then stage efficiency as 0.89. Then we are told that C1 is equal to C A1 is 140 meter per second, P01 1.01 bar. T not 1 288 Kelvin. We are told that Mach number with relative velocity at the tip. It is important we are told to do everything at the tip. Then that tip Mach number with relative velocity is 0.95. Having said this, we can find out the first the blade angles. So, for that we have to find out beta. Beta can be found out if we know any of the other velocities. We know just C1 at this moment, but we are given MR1. So, we have hint that we can find out V1. Since MR1 is equal to V1 upon under root gamma RT1. Here we are knowing it to be 0 0.95. So, if we know T1, then we can find out V1. So, let us find out T1. We know total temperature is given, it is equal to T1 plus C1 square divided by 2 Cp. So, T1 plus C1 square is 140 square divided by 2 into 1005 is equal to 288. Kelvin. So, this gives us T1 is equal to 278.24 Kelvin. Having said this, we can get now V1 since V1 is equal to 0 0.95 into gamma 1.4 R 287 and T1 is 278.24. So, we know V1 from here as 317.64 meters per second. Now, we know V1, we know C1, we can find out beta. So, which we know that V1 cos beta 1 is equal to C A 1 or C 1. So, we know that 
थ्री वन सेवन वन सिक्स फोर इंटू कॉस बीटा वन इज इक्वल टू वन फोर्टी सो इट गिवज एस बीटा वन एज सिक्सटी थ्री पॉइंट एटी फाइव डिग्री सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द एंसर्स हैविंग सेड दिस वी हैव टू नेक्स्ट फाइंड आउट यू वी कैन फाइंड आउट यू सिंस यू इज इक्वल टू वी वन साइन बिटा वी वन इज नोन थ्री वन सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स फोर इंटू साइन ऑफ सिक्सटी थ्री पॉइंट एटी फाइव एंड दिस गिवज एस यू वन एज टू एटी फाइव पॉइंट वन थ्री meters per second now we are told to find out mass flow rate stagnation pressure rise all these quantities but for that we have to find out for mass flow rate we know m dot is equal to rho av so we know we need to find out area for that we need to find out radii and height so let us work for this aspect to find out area so we can use u which is pi dn by 60 we have to remember that we use tip mark number so we have this u at the tip so we will get diameter at the tip so pi into 2 into radius at the tip Into n divided by 60, and that is equal to 285.13. So from here we get radius at the tip as 0.454 meter. Having said this, we are given that radius at the root or hub divided by radius at the tip is equal to 0.6 so we can have radius at the hub as 0.2724 so we can make use to find out mean radius and mean radius is radius at hub plus radius at tip divided by 2 and then that is 0.3632 we are interested in mean radius since we know that everything needs to be evaluated at mean radius so we can move ahead and find out area and area is equal to pi mean diameter into h and we know that it is equal to pi into 2 into mean radius into h so for h height of the blade is known to us from radius at the root and radius or the radius at the hub and radius at the tip so height is known from that we can find out area it turns out to be 0.4142 meter square so we can now find out mass flow rate which is density into area into velocity and that velocity will be c1 or c it is always ca1 for axial but in this particular case ca1 is equal to c1 but density is not known at 1 so we will use p1 upon rt1 into area into ca1 but again next problem is t1 is known but we don't know p1 so for that we can use isentropic relation which says that t01 upon t1 is equal to p not 1 upon p1 bracket raised to gamma minus 1 upon gamma so we have t not 1 upon t1 bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1 equal to p not 1 upon p1 so p1 is equal to p not 1 into t1 upon t not 1 bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 
having said this we know p01 we know t1 and we know t01 so we can make use 1.01 into t1 278.24 divided by 288 bracket raised to 1.4 divided by 0.4 so we get p1 as 0.895 bar so we can make use of p1 in this mass flow rate formula and we can get rho 1 or equivalently we have written p1 upon rt1 so everything if we put we will get mass flow rate 64.94 kg per second so we can find out then the compressor work which is m dot into cp into delta t naught s stage which is given to us as 20 kelvin m dot we have found out cp is known so it gives us work input as 1305.29 kilowatt so then we can find out pressure ratio which is p naught 3 upon p naught 1 is equal to 1 plus compressor efficiency delta t naught stage divided by t naught 1 bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1 so t naught s is known compressor efficiency is 0 0.09 0 0.89 into 20 divided by 288 so p naught 3 upon p naught 1 which is stage pressure ratio it turns to be 1.233 now we are told to find out the angles we are told to find out rotor air angles at the root so everything what we worked for the angles was at the tip so now we have to find out at the root so to find out at the root we have to go ahead and then first find out u velocity at the root so let us find out u velocity at the root which is pi d at the root or hub into n divided by 60 so it turns out to be 171.06 meter per second we have found out radius at the hub or radius at the root and then we know n we are using this formula we will get u at the root but whether it is hub or root we have everywhere axial velocity same so from the velocity triangle tan beta 1 is equal to u at the root divided by C A 1. So, we can get 171.06 divided by 140. So, it gives 1.2219. So, we have beta 1 is equal to 50.70 at the root. Inlet blade angle at the root is this now we have to find out outlet blade angle so for outlet blade angle we can assume we, can, we are rather told that it is free vortex design and in the free vortex design we know assumption is dh0 by dr is 0 that is delta h0 s or t0 delta t0 stage is same at all the heights at all heights we can make use of it and then we can write delta t naught stage for the root or for the tip is power work done factor into u at the root in or hub into c a divided by c p into tan of beta 1 minus tan of beta 2 so we have this as 20 this factor work done factor as 0.93 u as 171.06 this is 140 divided by 
वन जीरो जीरो फाइव सो वी नो टेन बीटा वन विच इज वन पॉइंट टू टू वन नाइन माइनस टेन ऑफ बीटा टू सो दिस गिवज अस टेन बीटा टू इक्वल टू पॉइंट थ्री वन नाइन फोर सो बीटा टू इज इक्वल टू सेवनटीन पॉइंट सेवन वन डिग्री एट रूट और हब सो दिस इज हाउ वी वुड सॉल्व द एग्जाम्पल विच इज गिविंग डिफरेंट रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर रूट एंड हब लेट एस वर्कआउट विद द नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल विच स्टेट्स दैट एब्सोलूट वेलासिटी एट द मिड प्लेन ऑफ एन एक्जियल फ्लो कॉम्प्रेसर रोटर इज स्वर्ल फ्री सो इट इज टोल्ड दैट वी हैव एक्जियल एंट्री सो वी हैव सी डब्ल्यू वन एज जीरो द एग्जिट फ्लो from the rotor has positive swirl and we are given with cw2 as 145 meter per second mean radius i is 0.5 and rotor angular speed omega is 5600 rpm calculate specific work at the mid plane and rotor torque per unit mass flow rate this is a simple example where everything is given we are having n as 5600 rpm and then we have mean radius rm as 0.5 we can find out u first which is pi dm n by 60 so it is pi into 2 into rm into n by 60 so we know 3.14 Into two, into point five, into five thousand six hundred divided by sixty. So this gives us velocity two ninety three point not six meters per second. We are supposed to find out compressor work or stage work, which for us is u into C W two minus C W one, but C W one is zero. so we have u into cw2 and u is 293.06 cw2 is 145 so it is basically 42.494 kJ per kg we can also find out torque and torque is r into cw2 for this case which is 0.5 into 145 so we have torque 72.5 meter square per second for the unit mass flow rate assumption so this is a small example where we found out all the things which are required we can go ahead with the next example which states that following is the data for an axial compressor using this find out air angle at entry pressure rise work input blade loading coefficient and the given things are inlet pressure and temperature 1 bar 300 kelvin degree of reaction 50% mean blade ring diameter 36 cm rotational speed 18000 rpm blade height 6 cm air angle at root and stator exit is 25 degree axial velocity 180 meter per second work done factor 0.88 stage efficiency 85% and mechanical efficiency 96.7% so having said this we can write down what are the given things in this example where we are told that p not 1 is equal to 1 bar t not 1 is equal to 300 kelvin 50% reaction lambda 0.5 mean diameter as 0.36 meter then we are told that omega is 18000 rpm then height of the blade is 0.06 meter then we are told axial velocity is 180 per 
meter per second. Work done factor lambda dash is 0.88, stage efficiency isentropic is 0.85 and mechanical efficiency is 0.967. We are told alpha 1 absolute velocity angle as 25 degree since it is told that the angle is air angle. When it is air angle, it is the absolute velocity angle. So, we know now we are told to first find out blade angles, but for 50 percent reaction we know alpha 1 is equal to beta 2, but alpha 1 is given. So, beta 2 is also known which is 25 degree. So, now we have to find out beta 1. Before that we will first plot the velocity triangle here. This is C 1, this is V 1, this is C 2, this is V 2, this is alpha 1, this is beta. So, and then this is C A 1 knowing this we can go ahead and first we can find out u which is pi d m n by 60 we know pi is 1.3.14 d m is 0.36 into n and n is told to be 18000 divided by 60 so we got u as 339 0.12 meters per second. Now, we are given with this C A 1 which is 180 meter per second, we are given with alpha 1. So, we can find out this distance which is suppose y. So, y or for us C w 1 is equal to C A 1 into tan of alpha 1. So, this is y. Further, we can make use of this y since this is complete u. So, we will have V 1, we know that tan of beta 1 is equal to in terms of for the velocity relative velocity we can say that it is equal to u minus y divided by C A 1. So, it is u minus C A 1 into tan beta 1 divided by C A 1. So, it is u upon C A 1 minus tan beta 1. So, sorry it is tan alpha 1. Having said this, we can find out we know alpha 1, we know u, we know c 1, c a 1. So, we know tan beta 1 from this relation and it turns out to be 1.417 and this gives us beta 1 is equal to 54.78 degree and then this itself is alpha 2 since we are given with 50 percent reaction rate, 50 percent degree of reaction. Now, we can go ahead and find out mass flow rate. So, mass flow rate is rho into area into velocity and so we have, we do not know rho. So, we can find out rho which is P 1 upon R T 1 for all sake we will assume total density is same as stagnation density. So, roughly our assumption is rho naught 1 is same as rho 1. So, this is P naught 1 upon R T naught 1 into pi d m into h into C A 1. So, we know now this everything and we can find out mass flow rate from here which turns out to be 14 point 79 kg per second. Knowing this, 
we can find out compressor work as lambda dash work done factor into u into c a into tan of beta 1 minus tan of beta 2. So, compressor work input is 0 0.88 into 339.12 into c a is 180 tan beta 1 is 1.417 minus 0.466 this gives us compressor work as 51068 joule per kg but compressor work is different from power in for power input since we are told that there is certain mechanical efficiency so power input is m dot into compressor work divided by mechanical efficiency so m dot is 14.17 power input is uh, to be calculated so 51068 divided by mechanical efficiency 0 0.967 it gives us 748.32 kilowatt now we can find out total temperature rise in the stage and then that stage temperature rise we know total temperature rise in the stage is work done of the compressor divided by Cp. So, it turns out to be 50.81 Kelvin. Now we can find out pressure rise P03 upon P01 is equal to 1 plus compressor efficiency upon T01 into delta T0 stage divide bracket raised to gamma upon gamma minus 1 from here we get compressor pressure ratio which is P03 upon P01 as 1.6 for the stage and then we can find out the factor which is the blade loading coefficient which is psi and psi is wc upon u square so wc is 51068 u square is 339.12 bracket square it comes out to be 0.44 so this is the way we will solve the examples of axial compressor thank you